fellow session of today. May I invite Father Martin to come on the dais. The resource person for the third session is Father Martin Anna Professor, Assistant Professor, Secretary of College, Santa Clara. Father Martin is one of the new staff of our institution of the Lord. He is also the alumnus of Satya Nilayam as a student. For the Martin is a person whose words speak less but actions speak more. He is a highly intellectual person, yet simple in lifestyle. Perhaps that is why students love listening to him inside and outside the class. We are indeed fortunate to have Father Martin with us as one of the resource persons. Dear Father Martin, may I invite you to address the camera. A very good morning, dear Father and my dear friends. The topic that I have chosen for my presentation is the post-pandemic self, an ethical perspective with special reference to living us. So we will be having uh, the understanding of the post-pandemic self from an ethical perspective and to within the framework of existentialist phenomenology. Let me summarize my entire presentation. This is a summary. The isolated, unconcerned self has ethically wounded in the post-pandemic world. A call to have an ethical stand of self towards the other with a special reference to Emmanuel living us. So this is the outline of the presentation today. First of all, I will present the context of the paper. The context of the paper is the completely ethically challenging post-COVID experiences. Secondly, I will identify the underlying moral issue in those concrete experiences. Thirdly, uh, we will have an ethical reflection on the moral issue, issue identified with special reference to Levinas. And finally, this paper attempts to give an ethical conclusion envisaging a modern human person in the ethically challenging post-COVID scenario. First of all, let us see what is the context of this paper. It is a concrete, ethically challenging post-COVID experiences. As we know, we are living in the post-pandemic world. The pandemic is not over but post-pandemic in terms of its effects and shadows on humanity. If you want to summarize in one word, what is this post-pandemic world is? The answer is woundedness. People in the post-pandemic world are wounded physically, mentally, economically, psychologically, spiritually and socially. Pope Francis said that the world is seriously ill from the consequences of the pandemic. He also rightly said, the devil is taking advantage of the crisis to sow distrust, desperation and discord, adding that the pandemic had brought physical, psychological and spiritual suffering. Together as humanity, we may use all our resources to bring back the things to normal after the pandemic. But in the process, the one thing which we hardly notice underneath is the devastating ethical woundedness of the people. This ethically wounded people in our society today are the isolated, unconcerned human beings in the post-pandemic world. Let us now see some of the shadows of pandemic in the post-pandemic world. Number one. Increase of isolating addictions to mobiles, gaming disorder, and exposure to poor contents. These online contents have the tendency to reduce the sensitivity of the players towards violence. 
we see so many violence in the newspaper. These things made the individuals to look for isolation, places of secrecy, earth for private space, etc., and escalated individualism. And many children nowadays, including the members of my own family, prefer to play with mobiles to enjoy the company of parents and friends. This is a new generation emerging. Secondly, our economy is also clashing with morality. The sectors that are fulfilling basic human needs like education, healthcare, and religious support are badly affected. But the online sectors sowing the seeds of moral degradation in easily accessible modes cause moral havoc in the minds of young people during the pandemic. And also thirdly, an isolation is always linked to domestic violence. National lockdown has reported more than 50% rise in domestic violence, intimate partner violence, sexual violence and harassment, rape, forced sexual acts, unwanted sexual advances, child sexual abuse, forced marriage, street harassment, stalking, cyber harassment, etc and child marriages, unwanted pregnancies, and abortions increased. Then, loss of jobs. This loss of jobs, according to the statistics, say it has increased both the male and female prostitutions as well as crimes in the major cities across India. Let us see some other manifestations of moral, moral degradations in the post-pandemic world. Poverty, ignorance, breakdown of traditional values, and the tendency to defy norms. Disrespectful human interaction, families and institutions are falling apart. apart. Escalated self centered individualism also. Then self absorption without compassion is also very prevalent. The widening gap between the rich and the poor threatening the delicate social fabric of a nation and co-created population of orphaned children. Then you have the increased stress, escalation in alcohol consumption, and also the coronavirus pandemic has permanently changed our relationship with technology, accelerating the drive towards digitalization. And we also have an increased non-suicidal self-injury. Finally, we have the implementation of many laws, accelerating capitalism at the cost of the well-being of the people during the lockdown. We can keep on uh, piling up so many things like this, but this is very obvious and these wounds are real. And having situated us in the context, let us now identify the underlying moral issue in these concrete experiences in our ministry places or where we go for uh, social ministries or even in our own communities and in our families, in our villages, we must experience all these ethically challenging experiences. Now let us now identify the underlying moral issue in these concrete experiences. The underlying moral issue in all these concrete experiences is the ethically wounded and wounding isolated and isolating, self-centered, immoral, unconcerned masses in the post-pandemic world. When we remember masses, we remember what is happening in Karnataka now. The unconcerned masses are a great threat to our society. Hence, we are in danger of losing a generation. The unisolated, unconcerned human beings in the post-pandemic world today this is a great ethical concern in today's scenario. This ethical wilderness is both a challenge and an opportunity for us today. Now having identified the underlying moral issue, let us now have an ethical reflection on the issue at hand. So according to deontological ethical theories, there must exist some rule or law which enforces moral value and that is 
natural to human person intuitively known because of already. There is an there is an element of intuition in all the people, no matter how he conceive of it and the way he approaches it, whether as conscience of camp or logos of stories or the a priori categorical imperative of Kant or right reason of Thomas Aquinas. Whatever you take, the one truth is very clear. The element of moral intuition is also found in the teleological ethical theories, whether implicitly or explicitly. It is implicitly found in the concept of ataraxia of Epicurus, in that of Pedagogy of Aristotle, and explicitly in the concept of right reason of force in the conscientious feelings of mankind according to men. So all these ethical theories, whether they are deontological ethical theories or teleological ethical theories, all these ethical theories point to the natural human desire to strive for ethical perfection. Having established the universality of natural human desire for ethical perfection, let us now try to fix, understand and fix the meaning of ethics. Ethics has been traditionally defined as a philosophical inquiry into the nature and grounds of morality. Now let us, since we have taken existentialist phenomenology as our framework, we can define ethics like this. Ethics as that studies human actions from the point of view of enabling humans to become fully human and fully alive. So actions that are enabling human beings to become fully alive and fully human is called the study of ethics. Thus, it is necessary for us to envisage a kind of ethical human person in a situation marked by ethical challenges where human persons are ethically led astray. Now let us now envisage a new human being against the isolated unconcerned human beings of the post-pandemic scenario through the ethical philosophy of Levinas. The context of Levinas is very very similar to our own context. He was a survivor of the Holocaust, we know, and it was a post-Holocaust scenario in which people were devastatingly wounded, wounded physically, mentally, culturally, socially and politically. And people became so close because of their traumatic experiences. The people who were silent during the massacre of millions of people continued to remain isolated and unconcerned. It is the situation of Emmanuel Levinas, which is very, very similar to our situation of post-pandemic uh, context. Thus, we will be looking into the ethics of Levinas to apply to our ethically challenging post-COVID context. Now as we know, Western philosophy focuses on being. Everything has being. So when philosophers look at being, they tend to group being into two categories, substance and accidents, or the beings. So everything must conform to these in the history of essentialism. And Levinas did not agree with this. He felt that this kind of making divisions thought away all the differences. He believed that this unified way of thinking reduced difference to mere accident. So as a Hebrew, he believed that the singularity of things gave them their identity. So he could find nothing that could unify all things. Hence he chose the good over the being. So, a shift from essentialism to existentialism. Rather than investigating being, Levinas investigated the good because according to him, the good transcends being. If you study a being, the study of being only seeks to understand what was left once the accidents were gone and it takes away our uniqueness. That is the problem with the study of be, whereas the good is about the uniqueness rather than commonality. So individuals are unique 
and this uniqueness is the interest of the group according to Levinas. These unique things are praises of the good or God according to him. Now where do we find these unique praises of God or the good? Levinas says the eyes have it, the human eyes. For Levinas, the face is the most naked part of the human body. The eyes for Levinas penetrate every mask. We make immediate contact. The experience is deeply moving when you look at the eyes of the other. It is a original moment of meaning according to him. In the eyes of the other, we cannot reduce a stranger to simply a being. So in the eyes of the other, we see a highness, holiness and divinity. So we can say, it is not that we shall not kill him. That is not the ethics. It is we shall not take the otherness away, respect the individuality. They are the unique places of God. Through their eyes we will realize who we are. That is understanding of self according to Levinas. Then he is also saying the face is ethical. Eyes, eyes are the face. So the face suggests that there is another order of existence. From his inspiration. The ethical conclusion that we are proposing is envisioning human persons or human self as related and interconnected, looking at the face of the other amidst the isolated, unconcerned human beings who are ethically wounded in the post-COVID scenario is the need of the other. That is the conclusion that we are arriving at. We should, not, uh, we should also keep in mind that this interconnectedness of humans should not exclude nature around us. That is very, very important. That is what the pandemic is teaching us. The COVID-19 pandemic underscores how tightly interwoven humanity has become. A single infected animal somewhere in China set in motion a chain reaction with effects that nearly a year later are still reverberating in every corner of the planet. These challenges of an interconnected world require new approach to ethics. For example, ethics is normally viewed from the perspective of the individual. What should I do? What should I do? Rather than asking, what should a whole humanity do? But sometimes we step back to take in a broader global perspective, asking how the world ought to respond to a pressing concern. Meeting this challenge will require a radical reward orientation in our own thinking, seeing our generation as a small, small part of much greater whole. We will thus need to adopt not merely a global perspective, not merely a global perspective, of everyone alive today, but the perspective of humanity itself, the hundreds of generations that are going to come after us. By adopting this ethical lens, we will have a better view of our crucial role in the larger story of our species. Thank you.
scenario is different. It is the whole humanity is affected. The whole cosmos, one humanity, kill the other. Therefore, what's your answer? In the future, people will seek each other or will the, the same scenario will come or not. The traumatized people will come together and enjoy the, the world. Will, will it happen or not? That's my question. That's a good question. What he is asking is, we are in a situation now where we cannot interact with each other because of uh, the COVID experiences. We don't know how the situation will be in the future. But within the given framework, okay, uh, within whatever resources we have, the available resources, the available interactions, the available time and energy, we have to keep this ethical lens at the behind. Okay, what are we doing? What is our mission in this isolated uh, post-pandemic world? That framework we should keep, the perspective we should keep, and depending on the emerging situations, we have to act according to the driving force that are within. Okay. We don't know what will happen in the future. We are very uncertain. But one thing is sure, we are wounded devastatingly. Uh, yesterday, Father Francis forwarded a video uh, lecture. A professor was expressing her uh, dissatisfaction. She is cold. Uh, she is very angry, frustrated, and the students as well. So both the sides, uh, there are problems of woundedness. We are not able to uh, do what is expected of us because of this woundedness. So we need to understand each other and create an atmosphere in which we help each other.
to grow in uh, one's self, one's self, whatever includes like uh, you know, cooking, uh, doing all sorts of things besides this mobile activity. Now, so the, my question is, should the digital companies also have a framework, you know, like as we have taken Levinas as the, the foundation for the good, so they also must come, uh, abide by these, uh, you know, the standard, the good, so that we are also not affected, otherwise the mobile companies are becoming, they are the isolating and we are the isolated because honey it is they who are profiting from our problem. So, what's your response? Yeah, that is exactly the point. The economy clashing with morality. Whatever the ethical principles uh, that are guiding them, especially those uh, uh, content providers, online content providers, they also have ethical principles set by the government or some other organization. But at the end of the day, what makes sense is uh, profit. So for the sake of profit, they will do anything. Now if you open the mobile, all the phone contents are there. Do they follow any ethical principles? It is available. Some governments may ban, okay. We are banning these online uh, sites so that our people will not get affected by all these mental and psychological illness. That kind of things are there. But the government is also nowadays is not ready because of the benefits they are getting. Uh, that also is uh, so that the economy is always uh, clashing with morality. That thing is said. Whatever you say, the base economy, base is economy in today's capitalist world. Okay, for that they will do anything. Even values can be altered according to their motives. So even the government is also helpless uh, while facing capitalist economy. They can't do anything because they have to sustain the uh, economy of the country also. So all these things are like webs. So one cannot be without the other. Whereas here only the individual responsibility comes forward. We cannot uh, say that all the things are available. They have to do. They have to do. Whereas we individuals have to take step and say, okay, I am responsible for my things, my growth, and my well-being. Yes, um, thank you. Brother Martin, um, for this uh, thought-provoking address and inspiring session on answering uh, doubts of our members here. I request Father Vinod to felicitate Father Martin.